part of the recovery effort and just the overall recovery of the economy uh, will be tied to what's happening on Maui. And uh, you know, we uh, had that reopening that you announced for visitors to West Maui last month. Uh, how have things been going with the introduction of tourists back into that area? What have you heard from residents uh, who are now welcoming in tourists? And, and what are those numbers looking like in terms of arrivals and those who are actually visiting and supporting areas like, uh, you know, those that were impacted beyond Lahaina? Well, the arrival numbers, as predicted, were very low. And we knew for sure that we were not going to see significant numbers until well into the fall. It was really about beginning just beginning the process. And I have to provide a little bit of extra uh, inertia for people to get get things going. Because after a crisis like this, people are stunned. And it's important to plan for the future. And I know that that's very hard because for some, it, it came off as too soon or, or not sensitive. Believe me, the tears that we shed, we shed them for everyone that's going through this um, transition. But we also have to prepare for the future because in time, we're going to have to build fire breaks in time. We're going to build the new school, which you have read about. We have to fund the fire department. And so we're at about 40% right now. It's way down. There's very few people visiting uh, West Maui. The place that they are going in West Maui, I believe is mostly uh, to Kapalua, which was pretty far away from um, the area of the crisis of the fire. But I need people to at least have the opportunity to go back to work. You know, it's, um, it is frustrating to me when uh, someone takes uh, a, a passionate position and then tries to block something that would affect recovery, not because I don't think people should have freedom of speech, of course I do, but everyone is suffering and struggling on Maui. And people of course are struggling even more in West Maui, but so many people are trying to rebuild their lives. The sooner I can get people uh, financed through their job or through the grant programs I have, the sooner they'll be able to either buy a new house or do a long-term lease. So those numbers that are, like I said earlier, at 67, 91 in hotels, I'd like to see that drop by a thousand or 2000 every month. And to do that, people need resources, but I can do it from lots of different angles. Fortunately, the TANF monies, the hundred million dollars that we've put into the, into the mix, we're already kind of set aside from the core budget. There's a lot of TANF money that's been uh, saved over the years for these needy moments for these crisis moments. So we had that available. Uh, but yeah, very few people traveling. The numbers will increase. We will not kick people out of hotels for tourists, but we will have people transition to places like fewer hotels so that there's just not as much uh, potential conflict. I haven't heard any stories personally. I'm sure there are the occasional moments because people are really, you know, they're going through a lot. But most people welcome tourists. Most people welcome the opportunity to have that paycheck. I want to go back to something that you mentioned in gearing up 